Ah, another draft science presentation. All right, so more snarky comments. Um, so we're going to do some more of this um, technically math, but math in hopefully a, <clears throat> a better diagram, um, a model, you know, without the numbers, just the proportions. And um, I think I know where the confusion is. And again, this is an argument that's been going on for like a year. So I had forgotten what the fundamental disagreement was about and um, this time thing. So, but anyway, so I'll try to make it clear where their mistake is. Um, maybe your mistake um, in understanding. Um, so anyway, so yes, I deleted a bunch of comments, but I saved the comments. And I will <coughs> deal with the comments. But I, again, I don't have any obligation to accept heckling. So if you can't construct your comment in a civil manner, I don't have any obligation to accept it. Um, you're making this personal, not me. And you know, and the clear thing is, is this is all probably just the cowboy. Okay, I mean they're all. The same comments were posted by, I didn't block anybody, I just deleted the comments. And then they reposted it under SOC accounts. So it's just a bunch of different accounts posting the same comment. And then they'll make accusations about somebody lacking integrity when clearly they're the ones playing the SOC account game. Um, yeah. So anyway, so I'll get to that. But uh, So let's do this thing one more time about... The, the interferometer specifically, but it's really just specifically about the one path and how long it takes the light to go the different directions. So the idea is is that something is moving and it's attempting to hit a target that's moving. And on the trip back, okay, the thing's going to be moving and it's going to be encountering a target that's moving in the same direction. So the target is moving towards the thing. And I have argued that this isn't, it, it is almost as obvious as this drawing. That when nothing's moving, so when none of this stuff is moving, the emitter's not moving and the target's not moving, everybody can understand that going this way is exactly the same line as going this way. So if I'm sitting on a train, talking to another person, and we have no velocity that we know of, that we know of, um, it'll take just as long for what I say to reach him as for what he says to reach me. Now, if you start gaining speed and you start to go really fast, the truth is, the stuff I'm saying, say I'm going forward and he's facing me, so he's is receding away from me. The truth is, okay, it'll take a lot longer for my words to reach him than for his words to reach me. So if you had two satellites moving very fast in space and say they were a thousand miles apart or ten thousand to make it even easier to see, and they were moving exactly the same speed, it would take longer for this satellite in the back to talk to the satellite in the front. So the satellite in the front, and ooh, sorry, um, the satellite in the front, this one, okay, let's do it your way, this one, all right, and they're moving, okay, so they're going that way. This one behind, as it says stuff, okay, so it's over here, this is in the behind, as it's saying stuff, this is moving away from it. So it's just going to take longer for the stuff to get there because it's actually more distance the sound has to travel or the radio waves or the light. It doesn't matter. And then when the inverse situation happens where this one in the front is talking to me, you know, me behind, sorry. I mean, it's really difficult to do this backwards. So which way was I going? This one was behind? No, this one was in the front. All right, so I have to start over here. <laughs> okay, so I forgot about this camera problem. I wasn't. I was going to illustrate it on paper. So, All right, so it's going this way. So when this front one communicates with this back one, you can see it has a huge advantage because the back one is getting closer. Uh, essentially, it's it, the distance isn't changing in the sense that the 
the travel distance isn't changing because the they're going against each other so they're going to meet sooner so essentially you could take if you could make those speeds really fast the speed of light or something uh, half the speed of light it could theoretically take you know a year for you know depending how much distance separation there is it could take a year for you to say hello and it could take a week for the re answer to come back there could be that big a difference and it would be a measurable difference. It's a real phenomenon. So technically on the train going 100 miles an hour, in fact, my sound, if I'm looking forward going 100 miles an hour my way, will in fact take longer to get to the guy than what he says when he says hello to me, or when he says asshole, you asshole. When he says you asshole to me, it's going to get to me much faster than when I said fuck you to him and that's the real way the real universe works it's a real thing it's not a fake thing all right so do the drawing once again and I'll try to think of a way to so let's just use dots okay to represent what's happening so let's just convert this into dots of time and you could say that you know the dots of time are a representation of what's happening. So you can kind of see that in three dots there's still distance that has this still has two dots that it hasn't done yet. <laughs> okay. Um, to do this much distance. <coughs> and in this case when they're crashing into each other, all right, <coughs> you can say, well, here's one dot, two dots, three dots, and you can do one dot, two dots, three dots, and you got this distance left over but it's they're going into each other so alright so this is I'm probably going to do it we've got to do a, a different kind of way to, to analogize it so let's do the trip going they're both happening at the same time so the thing to understand is the the what will be the receiver which we're calling the admitter you know the, the place it left is going to be also going the same way this is going so it starts in this this position and then, you know, at, at the first moment of time, I don't really want to do moments of time. So let's just say by the time that this, <coughs> the released photon here, so the photon is released here, by the time it gets to this target, the target will have moved to here. All right, so this is your extra distance. A fixed amount of distance that both of these things were moving at the same time though so this dot and this wall both moved at the same velocity this way not the same velocity sorry okay this is the velocity of the 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 movement so this V this target this V does not equal the velocity of this dot so there's two different velocities. There's the velocity the target's moving and the velocity the light's moving. And you can't really draw the insane proportions here because in the real experiment you're talking about a tiny fraction of a distance, uh, amount of time because this is moving so slow relative to the photon's speed. So this distance it moves is a tiny fraction. So you're, I'm just illustrating it exaggerated. So we assume that this target's moving very fast for the purpose of this to be accurate in terms of the proportions. All right, but the idea is the target moved. This is the new um, reflection point. Um, so we draw the new one with two lines, let's say. All right, so now our total distance isn't this line. Our total distance is this, this line. <clears throat> so this line is now much bigger and this also represents because this is a constant speed that light moves this is a constant amount of time so the time it took to get to the target this time is bigger than if it wasn't moving got it got it I mean that's if we can't agree on that then we can't get anywhere so let's just understand, that's where we start from. 
both things are moving at the same time. So this starts moving, this target starts moving the same time this photon starts moving. They're moving two different speeds, and in the same amount of time, the could be a new post. The light <coughs> goes that far, and Such. the target goes this far. So that's the difference in their speed is this relative difference of amount of distance. So this line versus this line represents the difference in the two things speed. But they're both going in the same direction and they both were doing it at the same time. Now we're going to do the return trip. So the return trip you're coming from here <coughs> and now you're going to go the opposite way. Um, and this target now is moving this way. Now, we already know this thing moved this distance already. So it's already moved that amount in the time this took. So this distance, this amount, this one moved to here is going to be this. That already happened when that was happening. When this arrow was being made, this arrow was being made. So now the target's already in this position and now there's going to be the return trip starts so the targets already moved that distance and now we're going to return trip and the return trip is going to this is going to start moving some more and the idea is is it's going to move the same distance and the amount of time this one's going to go this distance to the new location. All right, so here's the new, the finished location. So this represents the total amount of time here to here. And obviously, both these arrows are the other total amount. Could be and I argue post. they equal the same, the same amount. Said, in fact, uh, turn that off. I don't know why you know, it happens that way. So no, 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 nothing happens, and then all of a sudden something for no reason when I'm making a video. So it's probably the same idea of trolls or something. Um, so anyway, um, all right. So that all right. So that should be sort of clear. All right. So what what's they're saying is, all right, this time clearly was less time. So clearly this. T, and we'll make it a funny T, is very different than this T. So the trip one way took this T, T1, and this T took T2. Very different amounts of time. And velocity has to be the same. The velocity of the light's the same, and the velocity of the target's movement is the same. So therefore, you're saying, well, it, how can you do the same amount of distance? How can these distances all be the same? When clearly, um, you know, the, the, there's not the same amount of time. If you have less time, how can you go this distance? So how does this distance, how can it possibly be the same as this distance when the time where it did that is different. These two times are different. So something has to be going faster. And the point is, is what they're forgetting is something's not going faster. These things aren't going faster. This arrow, <coughs> this distance didn't get moved faster than this distance. It's exactly the same distance at exactly the same speed. <coughs> the distance, the time that changed, was the time of the total trip. The time that it took this to go from point A to point B and for this to go from point A to point B because point B moved towards it. It wasn't that this thing had less time. It had this, 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 this amount of time was exactly the same for, for this to move to here as it was for this to move to here. The time that changed was how long it took this to go from start from point A to point B and this is point A to point the new B. Clearly this A to B changed and this A to B changed. This, these didn't change at all. 
the amount of time it took to move that distance doesn't change. So the simple truth is this original is correct. <clears throat> okay, when, when you're going the same way, these two distances are the same and they're the same amount of time and these two distances are the ones that are changing because when you're going with it it'll take this longer and when you're going against it it'll take this shorter now, it doesn't look like that in this drawing but well that's because this arrow is not really the right size this arrow should be this arrow so that's where this was a lie okay this is the the total length of the time it took to get to the target that was moving away from you and so it's just kind of obvious I mean you know you can think of it with your hands moving apart or together and um, you can't change the amount of distance you, you know if something was bouncing between your hands going in and going out right it's the same it's the same distance it's just what proportions how much time you'll spend going one way or going the other way will change probably not that's probably not even perfectly getting it all right so should I try to restate it again I mean this is sort of the the important part here like I said the concession is that yes this distance will be the same as this distance yes those two distances will happen in the same amount of time but yes the time to hit the target is less and the time to hit the target is more but that just has to do with how long the light takes to get there it doesn't mean the lights going slower it just means how long did it take to get to the finished product so one of them it's adding the arrows and the other one it's subtracting the arrows but they'll take just as long so again if you think of this as dots of time it, it's going to move these dots of time okay in the same amount of time so you know these if, if it's you know three um, bits of time then there'll be three bits of time going this way I, I just don't it's not going to you haven't changed this distance you've changed this time and you haven't changed any speeds. Right, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wish I said this a little bit better, but I, I mean, it's there. When you're adding, when the two things are happening at the same time, so this, this, the target moving and the light moving are both happening at the same time. They're not adding to each other technically. They're happening at the same time, and so you have to understand this. It's happening the same time this is happening. They're concurrent. They're not happening at different times. So you have to understand that the thing that these things is exactly the same amount of time. It technically took the same amount of time for this arrow to do this as it takes for this one to get to this distance. Those things are the same. It's this time that it takes the light to get there that's different. But the light didn't change its speed either. The only thing that changed was how much distance the light had to travel. Not how much distance the target traveled, how much distance the light traveled changed. So they're using the change in the light's um, time to get to a place. And they're saying because those two things are different, therefore the, the velocities must be different in this. Because the times are different. And velocity is a function of time, distance divided by time. But it's it's <coughs> the, the 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 thing that's being time changed is how long it takes the light to travel the distance, because you're changing the distance as the light is traveling it. Right, I, I can't make it any clearer. But the bottom line is is this is the reality. Okay, <laughs> the the stationary object it's exactly the same amount of distance and time and when you do it um, when the targets moving yes it'll take longer going this way and exactly as much longer it takes 
will be exactly how much shorter it takes going back. So the two, the total time will be exactly the same. The only thing that's going to change is the time. Just, just as the example of me talking to somebody on the train. The amount faster, okay, the amount slower that my words get to the other guy will be exactly the amount faster his come to me. And so the conversation will take just as long, the whole conversation. The only thing that will change is how much time is taken for words to get from him to me versus words getting from me to him. But the, the conversation itself won't be any faster or slower. The whole conversation will be exactly the same speed. All right, that's probably enough. That seems the easiest way to metaphor this. So, so the argument would be: Do you believe that it's a fact that if I was on a train going hundreds of thousands of miles an hour, that there would be a perceptible difference in how long it takes my words to get to somebody else if they're say let's make them further away. The further away you make them, the more you'll see it. So let's make them a hundred feet away from me. So we're on a hundred foot long car on a train. We're going, we're saying, say we're going one quarter the speed of light or something like that. Um, and that when I speak, my words will take a longer amount of time to get to him than when he speaks to me, there'll be a lot shorter amount of time but that the whole conversation will seem like it takes exactly the same amount of time. There won't be any change in how long the conversation takes. There will just be a change in how long it takes my words to get to him versus how fast his words come back to me. All right. And so you either agree that that's what will happen or you have some other theory that somehow the truth is that somehow the sound can get to him even though it's going in the same direction as the motion, which I'm arguing it can't. All right. It's the difference between things. The first thing to recognize is the two motions are happening at the same time. The target's moving at the same time the light's moving. And so when they're coming, when they're going away from each other, okay it's different than when they're going towards each other obviously it's going to compress how much time it takes the light to cover the distance but nothing travels any faster or slower it just takes longer when both arrows are pointing in the same direction than if the two arrows are pointing at each other but you don't increase the speed it's like if two lights are shown from two different locations towards each other um, and they're going to be received. Uh, I must say, I had to say that right. Um, yeah, if two things are moving towards each other, the light doesn't go faster. Both things are shot at the speed of light, but it will take half as much time as if the two things are stationary. So if you move the two things towards each other at half the speed of light, you'll take half. It only take half as much time for the two beams to reach some center point. Or no, for the two beams to reach the two other sides. This doesn't matter. The communication will take half as long. If the two objects are moving at each other, you, I mean, just think intuitively. If two objects are moving towards each other, obviously it'll take half as long for the communication to take place because you're having the distance. Okay. So that's probably enough. So on to the tediously awful, horrible, nasty, shitty, useless, crappy comments. I think mostly they probably are. <laughs> so we'll do we'll do the ones that are remaining on the as post, and then we'll deal with the troll remarks from the sock accounts. Um, so, uh, so this is the um, Mike Falwell guy. Oh, it's longer than I thought. Well, anyway, we'll read it. Um, hi Gary. Hope all you. I hope you're well. So we're back to the kinematic argument again. I don't know if that's exactly what it is. Whatever. 
the if is the big factor here. Um, if the moving frame exists, then in theory the math predicts that the TTT will be more, which is fine, but despite the math predicting this to be an eventuality, it's simply never been demonstrated or proven to actually happen in reality. Um, well, again, the Michelson interferometer was before Einstein, so this really doesn't have to be a relativity argument. Um, it really does come down to whether you think, like I said, the train analogy with sound, I think, is perfectly viable. And you either understand that if you're talking in the same direction as somebody's moving away from you, that it has to take longer for them to hear what you said. And you either believe that or you don't believe that. All right. A simple analogy, you're sitting on a train at the end of a carriage with your back towards the motion of the train. Let's say the train is traveling 100 miles an hour. My back towards the motion so that I'm, the train's going the opposite way I am. At the opposite end of the carriage is the conductor enters and starts walking towards you at the average walking speed of, say, 4 miles per hour. Now, you're the observer in the moving frame. The conductor is walking towards you at 4 miles an hour, where you could argue that in reality the conductor is actually traveling at the combined speed of 104 miles an hour. Right, but you're moving 100 miles an hour, so it's still only 4 miles difference. But this would only be perceived to be a case for an outside observer. Um, right, and the outside observer is still going to see me moving 100 miles an hour too, so it's still only going to be a 4 mile an hour difference. So that said, all these uh, buffins have been fumbling around in the dark for over 100 years with various experiments to prove the moving frame exists and constantly coming up with a null result. Um, well, well the, just the fact is that we can't do the experiments, but you have to go really, really fast to see any appreciable changes because it's the speed of light you're using as the, as the test instrument. And yeah, it's moving really fast. When the simple truth is, however much money you spend, however big your build, however precise you make the instrumentality, and whatever location you are in, you are aboard the fucking train. Well, it is a little, there's more subtleties to it than that, I would argue. Uh, but, yeah, it is, the, it's, the, the bottom line is, is there's enough for somebody to, to do something, <coughs> I would argue that's yeah just fundamentally wrong and that is to like even when he, they did the equation right they did c minus v so they're trying to combine the two velocities as first like they're not happening at the same time when they are happening at the same time so you, you can't do c minus v and then pretend you've recognized what the total event is because those two things are happening concurrently to two different things. So it's not really a velocity equation. It's a distance equation. Clearly, going the way, when the thing's running away from you and you're going to throw a rock at it, the rock has to travel farther to hit it. You know that if something's running away from you, you've got to throw the rock harder to hit it because it's running away from you. If it's running towards you, you know you don't have to throw the rock as hard. So we know it's not the thing running that's changing in terms of how much time it takes. It's the fact that in one circumstance the two things are moving towards each other, subtracting, and in the other circumstances they're adding. But they're both happening at the same time. The thing moving is moving towards you the same time you're ready to throw your rock. All right. Um, so then Don Lincoln says, uh, Michael Falwell, you are misrepresenting the truth. There are no ifs here. So again, I don't, you know, it's just more, this is our dogma. You must accept the dogma. I'm not going to give you any proof of the dogma. I'm just saying there are no ifs. Right. That's bullshit. Remember that problem about the bug between the cars. Well, any of these problems where you pretend, okay, that, um, you know, that you can't split diff distances or that things, well, I won't even get to it. It has nothing to do with frames. The only relevant, the only thing relevant here is the fact that the light is moving at this same speed no matter how fast the emitter receiver is moving. That's it. And that'd be exactly my point. You're the ones claiming, in a sense, um, 
that um, you know you're almost denying the fact that the light is going the same speed and if it has to travel more distance it'll take it more time and if it has to travel less distance then the light will take less time to get to the target it doesn't change how fast the targets moving so again that's it okay that's the only thing that's relevant is <laughs> the fact that it will take me, it, the fact that I will throw my rock and it'll hit the target sooner when the target's moving towards me, that's the only relevant fact here. The target didn't move at different speed. No, it just took less time for my rock to get there. My rock went the same speed. The target's moving the same speed. It, it, it's target speed. But the time it takes to hit it is quicker. All right. Um, so then he says, uh, so that said, all these buffins, okay, so he's quoting, um, um, uh, Michael, uh, you're missing up, you're messing this up badly. It's astonishing. The experiments are there to prove that a stationary frame exists, and it's those searches that, uh, are failing. The experiment's there to prove that a stationary frame exists. Uh, again, I, I don't, I don't know what a stationary frame would be. Who's contending there's a stationary frame? The contention is there's an absolute zero. Obviously, somebody going 100 miles an hour on a train is not doing absolute zero, unless the entire other universe is moving past it. <laughs> but I mean, the fact that there's zero velocity and the speed of light at the other end, um, the fact that somebody recognizes there's such a thing as a zero velocity, an absolute zero, um, how, how, how can these experiments prove any of that? I'd love for a respectful conversation, but you and the people that upvote this are so astonishingly retarded, it's fucking depressing. Yeah, and I would say the same thing to you, but I'd also say you're probably a sock account. So why am I even having a conversation with a sock account who's find something depressing on the internet when it's being run by you trolls? Um, but yes, where's your where's your indication that you want something called respectful conversation when you're just an obnoxious dogmatist telling people there's hellfire? You're just preaching your fairy tale. You don't you don't preach evidence. You don't show any evidence. Uh, so Michael says, I'm glad I'm astonishing. That's made my day. Okay, I agree that regardless of the speed of the frame, even though we're not talking about moving frames, that the speed of light remains constant. The speed of light, yes, is always the speed of light. You can't make it faster or slower. And you can't add to it or subtract from it. So again, this whole idea of using velocity when the equation is really the math should be about the distance change and clearly shorter distances take less time but the only thing moving a shorter distance was the light the target didn't move a shorter distance it moved the same exact distance the other target moved when it moved its velocity is the same and its distance is the same the time that changed was how long it takes light to move the shorter distance it had to travel it traveled a shorter distance. <laughs> All right. Despite whether the experiments are set up to prove a stationary frame or moving frame, you do concede that the proof is lacking. I might be coming at, I might be coming at this arse about your about face, but I respectfully ask you to explain as best you can what exactly the experiment has actually set out to detect. Well, again, it's set out with a false premise that there is a, a change in the distances of those bits the velocity bits because there's a different amount of time so they're saying because it takes less time for this event to happen that somehow the distance this thing traveled is less distance because it happened in less time so therefore because it's when they're moving the same way it took longer they're using time to say that the two bits that aren't moving at the speed of light, the two target bits, had to move different amounts of distance because it happened in different amounts of time. 
but they're not recognizing that one was adding and one is subtracting. And adding and subtracting means something. It means less time automatically. If you're going, to, if they're subtracting from each other, if they're coming towards each other, it has to take less time. If they're going technically the same direction, it has to take more time. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on why the resulting outcomes fall short of the presumed outcome. Well, again, the presumed outcome is is that you there is a difference in the length and therefore you can detect something because there's some sort of difference in the distances but there isn't it's exactly the same amount of distance just as the conversation takes place in the same amount of to total time even though my words could take longer to reach you than your words take to reach me the total distance the total time of the conversation is exactly the same as if we're not moving at all that's a bit mean. At least the Menem isn't a UFO believer. I don't know what that is. Or a Christian scientist. That being said, Menem handled the response poorly. Well, says you. Um, again, I, I, I don't know, what is there to argue? I mean, right, as soon as you start doing that, like I said, it's not a velocity question. The speed of light is the, is, isn't what you're measuring. You're measuring the distance, change in the distances. It takes longer when the thing's running away from you. It takes longer to catch your dog if your dog's running away from you. If the dog is running towards you, it takes less time to catch him. I mean, how many simple analogies? This is about distance. All right, anyway, response poorly seems as if he's got confused doing algebra. Well, again, this isn't algebra, and clearly the, the entire, you know, one plus... Uh, you know, v, v, <laughs> v plus C over V squared times C squared, that gimmick is an algebra. It's a gimmick, uh, which doesn't help that his theory gets done with the intentional exclusion of math. So again, another, you know, I should just delete you. I, I'm so sick of this. I'm not excluding any math. I'm saying the math has already been done. And I've pointed out how the formulas aren't like, like the two-slit math. I pointed out how it's not as accurate as they claim it to be. It's an approximation. And I pointed out that the only variable in it that's of, of interest, of, of dispute, is the source of the sine theta, the source of the angle. That is the entire equation. Without that angle, there's no equation. Right? I'm saying the angle can be made by anything that just creates an angle, three degrees. And then you know the angle. Once you have the angle, you just multiply times 1, times 2, times 3, times 4, and you figure out exactly where your bars are. Uh, you know, there's no mystery to the math. So it's you people who keep claiming that you have some kind of math where you have these, this crap actually in the math. There's no bent space in Einstein's math. There's not. There's the inverse square law, all right? And uh, there's the speed of light that wasn't in Newton's and there's Maxwell's idea of induction and that's it there's no mystery in the math there's no special factors that prove any of this crap to be the truth the, the theorizing that goes with it all right all right so Scar Runner says will the real John fucking Wayne please stand up xxx yeah, exactly so it's just all sock accounts you know but this other comment by the I'll read it, but it's just a stupid comment in my opinion. Uh, the problem here is Zeno's paradox. Now this is nothing to do with Zeno's paradox. Realistically, there, there's there's no the the, the 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 paradox here isn't that you're cutting things in half and half and half and half and how can you cut things in half forever, or halving the distance. Um, that's what I would invoke because the light and the mirror problem is clearly a reflection of the Achilles and the turtle scenario, the echo, whatever it is. Um, the uh, Achilles is catching up on the turtle, but there is a problem each step of the way it gets to it. Each step needs to be checked, is what I'm trying to say. The point is, is that the both things are happening at the same time, and you'll, you're either going 
faster than the turtle or slower than the turtle. If you're going slower than the turtle, you'll never catch the turtle. If you're going faster than the turtle, you will catch the turtle. That's all there is. All right. There is this guy on Facebook that is that was really disgruntled about the paradox, and he kept saying chemistry and philosophy PhDs don't really understand it. If this is the case, then we may very well not understand all there is to understand about relativity. Um, I'm saying there is no relativity. There's one universe. There's things moving zero, and there's things moving the speed of light. <laughs> and everything's doing something zeroing or going to speed of light everything's on that scale somewhere they have a vector moving in space at every one millisecond of time and every millisecond your absolute velocity is changing no paradox is necessary alright I'm new to your channel and couldn't hold an umbrella to any of you but it's amazing and surprising to me that mass and physics debates are as bad as politics or religion um, well clearly they're, 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 people take it incredibly personal so yes so I would say like the, te the Tesla fanatics are religious fanatics they love Jesus and they don't like Muhammad and they don't like a you know and they're just fanatics for their hero their sports guy whatever that is it's a bizarre psychology and clearly there's people who are enamored with physics and its magical Copenhagen's and its many worlds and its multiverse and its bent dimensions and its bent space it, they, they somehow this is appealing to them this this Tinkerbell talk and yeah I don't understand that and so I say Tinkerbell talk and that offends them and just like somebody saying you know uh, whatever Noah living 800 years is rubbish <laughs> you know what you had eight kids in 800 years so you live to be 800 years old you know and you only end up with eight kids how'd that work out you must have spent an awful lot of your your centuries what impotent oh great you live 800 years but you got no dick all right. It might have something to do with this channel. No, he makes point blank denials and turns everything into a Jerry Springer show. So again, I, what denials have I made besides ones I'm willing to defend? So again, what are you saying I'm denying? Liar. What, what, what hard fact are you saying I'm denying? You're the ones who can't accurately describe an experiment. You can't accurately describe the, the single slit experiment. You can't accurately um, point out that the double slit um, isn't obeying the same mathematical um, premise in the sense that in a single slit, Huygens creates two interfering wave fronts, and somehow in the double slit, Huygens only creates two again. Even though there's two openings, it's only two when it should be four. On second thought, just trust the guy nutter, nuttier than squirrel shit. So, again, you're where have I asked for trust? Um, I'm completely interested in people being persuaded by evidence. Now, I make a sim simple accusation about how you lack evidence for Heisenberg. You lack evidence for Huygens. You lack evidence that light is bent by gravity. You lack evidence for any theory that somehow time is bent and that you can travel in time or that you do any of these things. You lack evidence and you won't even admit that yes the evidence is weak because you're so dishonest <laughs> you know you you think the evidence is overwhelming and that nobody can deny it when clearly it's not overwhelming and it's really easy to point out how it's very underwhelming evidence and there's rational explanations that work all right, so we'll do this sock account crap and be done with this. But it really is annoying to have to to waste all this time on one compulsive sock account spamming scum. You shouldn't be able to do this shit. I mean, Google shouldn't let this shit happen. Um, all these fake names, racist names, bullshit. I mean, it's just why should anybody have to deal with trying to figure out? Oh, is this a real account or a sock account? they just shouldn't allow people to have these garbage accounts that don't do anything no content 
I mean, I should just make a rule. You can't post a comment if you got no content on your channel. What's the fucking point? I mean, if you're not going to put out anything and you're just going to talk shit, uh, why should I have a right to do that? Especially if I can't tell you the difference between your account and a sock account. You can't do anything to make it look a little different, like invest a little time in your channel. All right. Barb Marley. So another, you know, obviously fake name, fake bullshit. This is sickening. How have you... Now you have to resort to deleting counter arguments. I'm deleting rude, obnoxious liars. So if you can't make your argument without lying, then yeah, you're not making it. You're not, it's not staying on the channel. You, you're a disgusting pig. I don't have any. I don't have any obligation to smell your farts. All right, counter counter. That you're, these aren't. You're not making counter arguments. You're just farting um, against the points that you shoved in this video about your stupid interferometer setup. So you do an experiment, and they just say you're stupid. So the stupid facts I collected by doing an experiment. That's what was collected. Was facts. That's what it was. There were facts collected by putting a piece of glass at a 45 degree angle. Fact one. Yes, it works just like a beam splitter. Half the light goes one way, half the light goes the other way. That's a fact, asshole. Now you're disputing it, then you're the fool. Alright, uh, all because they don't play by your rules. No, this has nothing to do with playing by a rule. This just has to do with the fact that, obviously, the evidence for your theories are weak your multiverses, your Huygens, your Heisenbergs, your bent space, your space contraction, your space expansion, your dark matter, your dark energy. You have weak if not non-existent evidence for all of these notions uh, and because it is not what you expect it to be. So again it wasn't about any expectation. It was about the fact that you're claiming that light's interfering with photons or interfering with photons. And then, in, and then you discover, because they do it with single photons, that, oh, the photons are really interfering with themselves. And then we get to the interferometer, and all of a sudden the rules have changed again, and it's photons interfering with other photons. So I went to detect what's the truth. Where is this interference happening? So I did a step-by-step -step procedure to see where is the interference happening, asshole. I did the scientific thing, not shit talking like you. Um, <clears throat> and because it is not what you expect it to be, you are truly the most dishonest person I've ever seen. Fuck you, sock account asshole. <laughs> so there's nothing to say to that crap. What was dishonest about the experiment I did on my porch? Where? Where was the dishonesty? I think there were perfectly relevant facts brought up. All right. It is literally explained clear and simple by your reasoning falls apart. So this is, I presume, Pepper Pepper Picholi. So this is the, like I say, he has four different names here, uh, making comments. Some of them are duplicate comments. That's why you know they're all his sock accounts. Yeah. Um, clear and simple. Why your reasoning falls apart. The math formula was clearly derived with intermediate algebra steps showing and explaining where the factors is coming from. Well, I'd argue it wasn't. You, you, the math that you sit there and presented was C minus V, C plus V. And then you put 0.2 in for the V part. And all of a sudden it was 0.2 equals 1.23 and 0.8 something. How can 0.2 turn into two different numbers? <laughs> there was no showing of anything being derived there. And it wasn't until you got further down that just showed that, oh no, this is really, we're doing the 1 plus, um, you know, V plus C and then, you know, over V squared, C squared. Um, <clears throat> you denied both of them. I deny that it's not rigged math. That has nothing to do with it. Actually, it's physically happening as the drawing illustrates. Um, this proof, you're, this proves you're a crank. So again, um, I can't do anything more than explain 
why I see what I see and why I don't see what you see. And that's the best I can do. I don't see you doing that. Um, <clears throat> and you're clearing, again, not explaining any of the points I've already raised about the experiment itself and the creation of the pattern, which is you don't need the two legs combined to create the pattern. Uh, okay, if you value your time or sanity, so he's quoting somebody, then under no circumstances should you willingly really enter into a debate with a crank. So I don't know where, who, who just said this, but a uh, crank's cognitive processes are impregnable to all forms of logic, reason, evidence, uh, in extreme cases, basic facts. So he says it's a basic fact, okay, that point two and point two aren't really point two and point two, that they're really 1.25 and 0 .8008. <laughs> I don't think so. Alright. You can't smear shit over someone who's already covered in turd. So he's pointing out somebody else's, quoting somebody else's bullshit. I don't, whatever. I don't think I proved anything. Uh, same guy. And by the way, uh, the fact that your setup doesn't change with both arms means that it's not the Michelson interferometer you dolt. The point is, is that they make claims you need a beam splitter. So why don't you explain to me why I need a beam splitter? If a plain piece of glass splits the light 50-50, why do I have to have something called a beam splitter? So why don't you explain that first? And then we can move on. All you did was painfully try to make your own ghetto setup. So, so again, it's just something to do with the ghetto setup somehow diminishes the fact that it works. So light doesn't really reflect 50-50 off a plain piece of glass. It really doesn't happen. This ghetto set setup of putting a diffraction gradient between two pieces of glass is not useful. You're not going to gain any knowledge of what happens in the real world by doing these experiments. I mean this is how these people just are have no respect for the scientific process or facts. Because they don't even want to hear about the facts. All right. Um. Let's see. Um. Uh, set up with substitute materials, and you confused a fucking thin film dust interference for the Michelson interferometer. So again, what's the difference? Uh, just explain the difference. Explain the difference between the dust on the outside of the glass and putting a layer of dust between two pieces of glass. Why don't you Why don't you explain how? the function is therefore changed in any way when it's exactly the same function and that's exactly the point being made here is that the diffraction gradient is creating the pattern not any special kind of interference taking place all right all you did was uh, okay did that uh, I don't have to address your stupid setup so you don't have to recognize that clearly the pattern can be created without two legs interfering with each other so you can create some other kind of interference. So I'm just saying that fact is not meaningful in any way. It doesn't indicate that maybe um, they're missing something. Amazing. And you confuse a fucking thin film dust interference uh, for the Michelson interferometer. No, no, okay, you did that. It's a red herring. Okay, so it's a red herring to point out that they say the two, two beams are getting uh, combined in the final stage and interfering with each other and you point out that now you don't need the two beams just one beam interferes with itself and that doesn't matter it's a red herring and it's irrelevant so the fact that you can make the same exact pattern with only half the experiment functioning is not interesting information uh, okay so uh, we're just seeing I mean it's kind of obvious Right? I mean, I don't have to. I don't have to defend myself against that, do I? It's not informative. <laughs> That's idiotic. Um, okay, along with all your nonsense about redshift. So the nonsense about redshift is is that yes, both emitters and receivers can shift light. That's nonsense. All right. It's not that people are cowards or anything. Um, well, you're demonstrating yourselves to be cowards. It's that they're 
I mean, unaccountable, slandering, lying cowards. Uh, it's that they're all tired of this shit. Tired of what? The fact that you can't make any good arguments and I make nothing but good arguments. Yes, you're tired of losing. You fail at the most basic fucking task, understanding straight line motion. Well, I'm arguing you don't understand that when two things are moving at the same time in the same direction is different than when two things are moving at the same time towards each other. And then you and David D. Hilster accuse everyone else of being uh, sycophants for Einstein. You do this directly in the previous video at 4530. And what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I mean, frankly, uh, you know, if you're going to say that, um, uh, let's see, well, there's nothing to say. I mean, you're basically implying something like um, some sort of relativity argument. If you're going to somehow defend the idea that somehow um, the, the, the distances the things move require the other things to move the same amount of time to take the same amount of time that the two things moving away from each other again <laughs> you know hugging a woman that's running away from you takes longer than hugging a, you know a woman that's running towards you <laughs> you know the fact that you can't understand that and that that time difference doesn't mean the woman moved more or less distance the woman moved the same amount of distance it's just that when your distance is complementary to her distance, the event takes less time than when your distances are not complementary in terms of they're in the same direction, therefore the motion, the time is extended. All right, anyway. Uh, and, then there, and then when people try to point it out how stupid all this is, you just say that it's other people that are brainwashed and they're just too close-minded. No, I say you're you're obstinately fanatics because you won't agree with the simple argument that's been made that your evidence is weak that it's not strong evidence it's nothing like the evidence for evolution for example the evidence for evolution is overwhelming evidence you don't have anything close to overwhelming evidence and yet you're talking like you can disprove all other explanations in the universe with your weak evidence and you talk as if you've already considered every other possible explanation and you found them all wanting because you considered every one of them carefully you never did any of that your fanatics fundamentalist fanatics you just say that it's other people that are brainwashed yes okay uh, and they're just too close-minded no you're worse than close-minded you know, a fucking Muslim isn't just closed-minded. He's an obnoxious, arrogant cunt. And that's what you people are. You're, you're nothing short of just as fanatical. You'll resort to terrorism. You'll resort to downrating vote, uh, videos, sock accounts, all of this abusive behavior. Because you're fanatics. All right, right at 42.10 in the previous video you say we just want to be part of the board I didn't say you wanted to be I said you are okay <laughs> that's a, that's the simple truth you're you're like a sports fan nothing better than a silly sports fan you know oh he has size you know uh, whatever nine and a half shoes just like me you, you find something admirable in the asshole and you become some kind of devoted sycophant Yes, because talking about basic fact, talking about a basic fact about how motion works means we're part of the board. Well, again, I don't think you understand how motion works, and that's the argument on the table. It's, do you understand that the time an event takes doesn't have anything to do with individual components of the event, if they're all happening at the same time? You can't say... Again, if the dog is running towards me, you can't change how long the dog takes to run distance. You're only changing how long it'll take for me to reach the dog. Because he's moving towards me. <laughs> Jesus. I'd love to talk about some of the things here because I think we do need to clarify what is 
meant by time is a dimension, I don't think there's anything to say about that. I'd, I'd say on its face, it's just absolutely a completely unevidenced, and in my opinion, unimaginable pile of crap. There's three physical things known as dimensions. Up, down, left, right, forward, back. They all have so much in common. Time doesn't have anything in common with those things. <laughs> Second, it's clearly obvious what time is. Time is not instantaneous. So the opposite of time is instantaneous, right? That's the opposite of time. Instantaneous. Anything that's not instantaneous is time dependent. So time is just a byproduct of being not instantaneous. Done. Time is pretty simple. If you're not doing something instantaneously, you're doing it in a timed condition. But you're not in a dimension. Um, anyway, and what it should mean and all that sort of stuff. And again, I, don't, I see it as just grotesquely simple. Time is completely uncomplicated, and you want to make it complicated. Uh, but we can't even get past lesson zero. This is all too hopeless. This is actually futile. Right, so just give up. Quit harassing me, and just give up. Take off, because this isn't productive, in my opinion. Um, I, I mean, some of it is. I mean, the, the fact that, you know, Nothing is, you know, there's always little catches to everything, little little nuances. And I would argue that, but the point is, is that you people are the ones who don't want to hear about any of the nuances, just as the, you, you, you don't want the experiments to be done. You don't want to find out causes for things. You're totally disinterested in causes, and all you care about is effects. All right, well, anyway. It is literally explained clear and simple why your reasoning falls apart. So again, so this is the same comment posted by two different accounts. So we won't bother reading it again. Um, so I'm just saying, this is sock accounts. Same asshole. Just keeps harassing. Uh, and by the way, the fact that your setup doesn't change. So again, same comment. Now he's got a new, new name, Pulse Light. Same exact comment as was previously posted. Um, all right, graph science versus rigged math. Okay, so that was the video. So pulse light like here. It is literally explained clear and simple why your reasoning falls apart. There it is. Same comment again. Uh, okay, so this is a different one. Um, okay, Brian something. Anyway, um, dumb sock puppet. Where is this angry educate? educated crowd on any of Ken's videos question mark well the, yeah the fact is everybody else gets away with it and uh, that's okay I mean obviously I had a previous reputation this is about people who hate me for the other 10 years that I was on the internet not doing physics and it's just a, they're just dragging over the same socky harassing terrorist type people and this is what they do uh, with their life they um, just they're just drunken hecklers uh, nowhere. All these salty um, something jaded people who just character slayers. Don Lincoln, uh, you are misrepresenting the truth. There are no ifs here. Uh, remember that the problem about the bug between the cars. I don't know why that's in there. This has nothing to do with frames. The only thing relevant here. Okay, so uh, I guess he's just posting the uh, rhetoric so far. So. Here we go again. Uh, so that said, all these buffoons have been fumbling around in the dark for over 100 years, and so now he responds, "You're missing this." Okay, so yeah, we already did that part. That's on the actual. That's still on the board. Okay. So that was in the original comments. Um, all right. So what what is there to glean out of this? Um, uh, It's just the, the, the again. We're just it's just the distance thing. Distance is expanding when the two things are going the same way. Okay, distance expands. Distance contracts when they're coming this, to, towards each other. 
So I'll just go back to the can you can you assholes agree that if I'm having a conversation on a train and we're moving a thousand miles an hour that it will in fact you know and there's no car and contained airspace or any kind of bullshit where you know the air is compressing like normal um, let's say it's an open car um, and that when I talk, it'll take longer for my words to get to the other guy, and when he talks, it'll take less time for his words to get to me. But we didn't change the speed of sound. The speed of sound is the same. The only thing that changes is that, you know, when the motion is in the direction of my motion, it has to take longer because it has to travel more distance. And when the two motions are towards each other, it takes less distance, less time. But it doesn't change how fast anything's moving. Everything's velocity is exactly the same. The only thing that happens is it takes longer for the event to take place. The two opposite events take a different amount of time. But the distance traveled and the velocity traveled is exactly the same. Okay. That's all I can do. Uh, so, until next time, I don't know what the fuck to title this. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll think about it for a second or two and then just type something. Yeah, that's a simple answer. I, guess, I, I wish I could draw it better. I wish I'd come up with more analogies. I mean, I think the train analogy works. I think the chasing your dog analogy works. It's a lot easier to catch my dog if he's running towards me than if he's running away. I don't have a dog, by the way. But, you know, I did have one as a child, so I understand how dogs work. But it doesn't change how far the dog moves. The amount of distance the dog moves doesn't change. The only thing it changes is the amount of time it takes me to get to the dog. I can't say anything clear on that, I don't think. <laughs>